It is very important to understand that the clinical investigation plan or protocol translates the manufacturer's or sponsor's vision or mission statement into a marketable product. It is the bridge between the research and development phase and preclinical work to actual medical use. First, we want to understand the unmet clinical need. What are the benefits of the new treatment? What are the risks involved? And do they not outweigh the benefits? Again, this goes to risk management. Evaluate the importance of the unmet clinical need. How critical is it to humanity to do something about it? And this brings us then to a consideration of a market size. A small patient population for our unmet clinical need will definitely influence our clinical strategy and clinical investigation design. Our second point is understanding the phase of device development we are in. In other words, how close are we to a final design or a frozen design, in our jargon? When planning a clinical investigation, we must take into account the likelihood of the need for a device design change. For this, work closely with research and development and get a feel for how prototype-like the investigational device still is. Evaluate whether possible device design changes will be major or minor, and whether these will stop the clinical investigation or merely suspend it. Will it require a major amendment to restart the study after changing the design? If so, what is the potential for not being able to compare data from design A and design B because they are significantly different and work differently on the patient's body? At this point, assume that we have defined the unmet clinical need and how we propose to address it in clinical and or medical care. In other words, we define the potential claims for the medical device to be put on the market. Then the following questions arise. Do we need clinical data? In most cases, the answer is yes. So let's review the different reasons why. A. First, there are regulatory requirements which vary from one country or geographic region to another. But the basic principles always remain the same. This means that the extent and amount of clinical data needed is based on a risk management assessment. We can find further information about this in other WMDO courses. B. Users will want data. Doctors who will use the device will want to see data before using it on their patients. We can call this user acceptance. Does the device support the standard of care, or SOC, or does the device change the standard of care? In the latter case, users will want to obtain more data to be convinced that a change in the standard of care is justified. C. In order to obtain payer acceptance and reimbursement for the medical device, Cost, benefit and clinical utility data will also be required.